All right, amen. Thank All you. Right, How about that for a little bluegrass this morning, right? Yes. And hey, mixed in a little, what was that, Breakfast with Bach, too, or Mozart, or one of those classics? Yeah, that is something else. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, and welcome to our, well, welcome to the 909 service, and welcome to our Sunday morning kickoff for Thanksgiving week. I'm excited to be here. I'm glad to see that y'all have joined us, and this is the 909 service. The 909 service is all about being together, being comfortable, and being ready for a great service full of worship and fellowship and fun and music, right? The, uh, so, you know, a lot of y'all know that music really strikes a chord with me, no pun intended, but it is an integral part of the service. Um, Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys often talked about the soulful joy that music inspires and said there's nothing, nothing more important than spiritual love in music. So we've got this talented group of musicians here. Let's get right to the music. I'll invite y'all to stand up and join along with Lee and the band. Lee, take it. We got together to ask the Lord blessing. He chastened and hastened his will to make known. The wicked oppressing now cease from distressing. Sing praises to his name. He forgets not his own. Decide us to guide us our life with us joining. Ordaining, maintaining his kingdom divine. So from the beginning, the fight we were winning. Now, Lord was at our side. All glory be thine. We all do it slowly. How we will triumph and pray that thou still our defender may be. Thy name be ever praised, O Lord, make us free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord All right, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you all. And while we're getting all situated, um, let me extend a belated welcome to all the folks joining us via the magic of the internet. The, um, I have heard that Wayne and Jerry Crow are out there in cyberspace watching us somewhere. Um, maybe it's Louisiana, maybe it's cyberspace, but welcome to them and welcome to all our virtual attendees today. And so now let's move into Joy's time and we'll get right started with our birthday slide. Is that right? Birthday slides. Who's here that we can wish happy birthday to? Uh, oh, I figure you see fingers pointing over there, Linda. How are you? <laughs> they are uh, good. Happy birthday Under to the you. Bus. 
Anybody else having a birthday that maybe is not on the list? Anybody want to celebrate a birthday that they're not having that doesn't want to be on the list? Okay. Who is that? Who is that? <laughs> Linda's back there. Linda? Yep. I can see her head. <coughs> it's your birthday. We'll see it's her birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Linda. Just you today. Happy birthday to you. All right. Thank you. And if you see any of these folks, be sure to welcome my happy, happy birthday. All right. What's next? Uh, anniversaries. Anniversaries. Any of our anniversary couples here? Anybody celebrate their anniversary just because they like to, regardless of whether it's the day? No? No? All right. The, uh, well, if you see these folks up there, please do wish them happy anniversary, too, and happy anniversary to everybody out there. The, um, what's next? We got some more slides, Elizabeth? Yes, we do. Ah, these are some very special people that have performed some very special services for our country. These are the veterans that were here in the service last week. And some of the veterans that were upstairs for the, the later service that were there. Um, we thank you all for everything that you've done. Special people doing special work, for sure. The, uh, let's see, what's next? The, oh, the bells. The bells performed at the, the 1050 of the 11 o'clock service. Um, wonderful thing. Um, if you're interested in joining the bells, if you're interested in being a bell ringer, I think you could see Christine for some more information on that. Uh, they... they perform and rehearse and do things yeah, periodically throughout the year. So yeah, so if you're interested to be a bell ringer, see Christine. She can help you with that. Yeah. Next. Oh, nah, she's giving me a thumbs up there. Right, we can move on. Well, let me move on. Um, before I open the floor to everybody and see what kind of joys they have that they might share, let me, um, let me take a little peek at some of the coming events that, that help make our community special and sort of reinforce that specialness that we have. Like the community Thanksgiving, um, Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock at the Highlands Rec Park is the community Thanksgiving. Everybody's invited. Um, it's a great little time of, of fellowship and togetherness and community bonding. Um, another little thing that I love in this town, too, is the ice skating rink is due to open soon. Um, ice skating. Get ready for the wintertime and ice skating. Best part of winter here. Um, Saturday, this week Saturday, is the town celebration to light up the park in Maine. Um, it's another one of these great little things that we do Saturday evening from 6 to 8 over there at the park. Yeah, there. you could be there. We'll be there. You could be there. All right. How about this then? Yeah. Uh, another reason to go. Another super special way on that. Um, and then if we look ahead to the next weekend, the Christmas parade is December 2nd. So be sure to be aware of the Christmas parade and even the barbecue dinner that's after that. But there's lots that goes on. Lots that makes this town happen. Um, as I look out back, I can see the coat drive box back there. Um, it's a great way to help out the community. If you've got a coat or two to donate, you can bring it and put it in right there in the box. Um, you can adopt a family at the emergency council, or you can see Christy for doing that. Um, just, just tremendous ways to help out. So that's kind of, all right, I've done my part to let us know the joys that this town's got. Who's got something they like to share? Something that, you know, maybe put a smile in their heart or maybe in their belly like a pumpkin roll or something? Um, anybody got a joy? Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, let's see if we've got something you'd like to share. 30-year mortgage, gone. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that, that's quite a treat there. <laughs> the, congratulations <laughs> to you on that. That's a great feeling. Oh, Elizabeth got you. Yep. We're, oh, yeah. Hello, we are visiting today, and let's just say thank you for the pumpkin pie that's a praise ah, I mean, that's sorry pecan pie pecan pie, pecan, ah. pecan pie. you thank never you. know what you're gonna get it's just wonderful every time thank you i'm glad you're visiting i hope you enjoy this kind of thing be sure to say hi to them the uh oh i'm sorry half here and half on the way all right well welcome i'm glad y'all could be here and join us the, uh, that's what see that's great that's what this week is all about folks um getting that thing to happen um anybody else no no, nobody's happy the McRib is back? Nope. Oh, Buzz. All right. Uh, I just, our uh, first grandson is having his first birthday on Thanksgiving. Hey, all right. That is a great way to be thankful then. Good news and happy birthday coming up for him. Um, anything else? All right. If not, um, I'm going to ask the band to see if they can share some of their gifts with us while I get the baskets going and see if we can't kind of help out. 
and help the church with all it does, its many ministries and missions. Um, I'll get the baskets going, and maybe I can get a couple of people to help and sort of shepherd them around the room. The miracle of 99 is they always come back. Well, thank you, and thank you, everybody. Um, let's say thank you together. Dear God, we thank you for the great transi yeah, we thank you for the great traditions of Thanksgiving week, the eating, the napping, the football, and the all-night sales. But really, we thank you for the spirit of community and togetherness that Thanksgiving represents. And we thank you that we can continue to share our blessings and help our church and our community, not just this one week, but throughout the year. With hearts full of thanks and bellies at the ready, we say, Amen. And so now, take it to the cross. It's our prayer concerns time. Um, we've got the cross up here. It's up here all the time. You're always welcome to bring a, bring a prayer concern here. Um, there are slips of paper gathered around on tables and at the end of the rows um, scattered about. Well, you're invited to write something down if you'd like, and you can bring it up to the cross. Um, the staff will pray over these. Um, they'll release them to God for you. Um, very rewarding to do that. Um, you can also just take a moment where you are and just be still. Just take a moment of stillness and, and, and open up and do some talking and some sharing right where you are. So whether you're coming to the cross or you're just staying there, let's take a moment and let's do some opening up. Charles, you got some soft? Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so it sure does seem like every year Santa's getting closer to stealing Thanksgiving for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, and, and the good folks, the good folks all along Madison Avenue, they seem to be preaching the message of the season that, well, download the app, skip the line. That's what I hear over and over again. This is happening all around us. And while this is happening, I'm going to encourage us all in this, in this season of thankful reflection to appreciate the relationships that grace our lives. Dear God, help us cherish the ties that bind, the ties of family, friendship, and love. Fill us with warmth and understanding, and both an appreciation of the simple joys of being in each other's company, and also the mindfulness to be aware of others who may be lonely or in need of an outstretched hand of friendship and generosity. To paraphrase what Clarence the Angel wrote to George Bailey, 
No man is poor who has friends. And as we pursue the true meaning of the season, I'll ask that you please join with me in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. And now, folks, now we're in for a special treat. This is going to be our band time. Um, they're going to do one of my favorite Southern Gospel spirituals coming up here. Um, Coincidentally, or maybe not so coincidentally, this song was written by the same man, a man named Albert Brumley, who wrote our closing favorite, I'll Fly Away. I was going to tell him that. Oh, I told him. I stole at least thunder. That's what I get by going first and having this bigger microphone. <laughs> All right. Lee, tell us about the song, and let's take it away. It's not the diabetes guy. It's the other guy. <laughs> Listen to radio station where the mighty host of a heaven sing. Turn your radio on. Turn your radio on. If you want to feel those good vibrations coming from the joy that his love can bring. Turn your radio on. Turn your radio on. Turn your radio on. And listen to the music in the air. Turn your radio on. Radio, get in touch with God. Turn your radio on. Well, don't you know everybody has a radio receiver? All you gotta do is listen for that call. Turn your radio on. Turn your radio on. If you're listening, you be a believer, leaning on the truth that'll never fall. Turn your radio on. Thank you. Turn that radio on. That's all right. Ah, it's so tough to get up here and follow these guys kind of thing, but it's scripture reading time, so move on, I'll do. Um, today's Bible reading comes from the book of Deuteronomy. All right, now don't dare ask me to spell Deuteronomy. <laughs> I can barely say it. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 7 through 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland of poisonous snakes and scorpions, he made water flow for you from Flint Rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. Randy, that's the Bible reading for today. You're up. <laughs> and also with you. <laughs> I 
I'm still thinking about Tay's uh, really creative phrase of with bellies at the ready. I appreciate that. I caught that. That was very nice. Very nice. That was great, man. Thank you. Could we hear it for this band again this morning? My goodness. <laughs> There's a roof up above me. I have a good place to sleep. There's food on my table, and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Jeff and Sherry Easter uh, recorded Thank You, Lord, for Your Blessings on Me several years ago. It's one of those songs that uh, comes to mind for me this time of year, especially. It's this gentle reminder of the abundance of blessings that we daily receive that we easily overlook. After dealing with some very uh, significant knee pain back in August, some of you may remember that. I complained about it enough, so you probably remember some of that. I have found myself since that time, and my knee is doing much better now, and so grateful for that, but I found myself with that memory still very much in the back of my mind, offering a, a number of just little prayers of thanks to God. I, I have oftentimes, since August, when I can get in my car without pain, when I can lift my leg and put it on the brake so that I can start the car, when I can do get in and out of the bed without grimacing or even yelling at times, I just... Uh, those kinds of things that I never gave a thought to before, uh, I find that I'm quite thankful for now. It's really easy to fixate on life's problems. We've all got them, and there's plenty of them in the world. And sometimes it really seems as if our burdens far outweigh our blessings. In my weekly uh, radio message on WHLC Radio here in Highlands that airs this morning, I shared a poem that was written a number of years ago by Bruno Hagspiel, God forgive me when I whine. Maybe you've heard it. It goes like this. Today upon a bus I saw a lovely maid with golden hair. I envied her. She seemed so gay and how I wished I were so fair. When suddenly she rose to leave, I saw her hobble down the aisle. She had one foot and wore a crutch, but as she passed, a smile. Oh, God forgive me when I whine. I have two feet. The world is mine. And when I stopped to buy some sweets, the lad who served me had such charm, <clears throat> pardon me, he seemed to radiate good cheer. His manner was so kind and warm. I said, it's nice to deal with you. Such courtesy I seldom find. He turned and said, oh, thank you, sir. And then I saw that he was blind. Oh, God, forgive me when I whine. I have two eyes. The world is mine. Then while walking down the street, I saw a child with eyes of blue. He stood and watched the others play. It seemed he knew not what to do. I stopped a moment, then I said, why don't you join the others, dear? He looked ahead without a word, and then I knew he could not hear. Oh, God, forgive me when I whine. I have two ears, the world is mine. With feet to take me where I'd go, with eyes to see the sunsets glow, with ears to hear what I would know, I am blessed indeed. The world is mine. Oh, God, forgive me when I whine. In their trek through the wilderness, the children of Israel had done their share of whining. They grumbled against God when they were hungry and thirsty, and they were hungry and thirsty a good bit, apparently. They were wondering out loud if sometimes even perhaps it would have been better for them to go back to the familiarity of Egyptian bondage rather than endure the wilderness that they were having to navigate on their way to freedom. But that was about to be all over now. In the reading this morning that Tay shared with us, the wilderness would soon be behind them and they would soon be entering the promised land. And with the newfound blessings and abundance that awaited them, they would be met with a new challenge. They would be tempted to forget the Lord their God who had brought them out of Egypt and sustained them in the wilderness, they would be tempted to drink from the seductive well of pride. Take care, Moses said, that you do not forget the Lord your God 
When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herd and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied, all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourselves, forgetting the Lord your God. Do not say to yourself, my power and might of my hand have gotten me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. If they are not careful, they will be trading one wilderness for another. In the wilderness where they had just journeyed for 40 years, the hard times served as a reminder of their absolute dependence upon God. They knew it every day. Even as they grumbled against God, they knew it was God to whom they needed to call in their times of distress. There's an old saying, there are no atheists in the foxhole. Find yourself in hard times and you'll find yourself having a better prayer life. But even as they were leaving behind that wilderness where they had been clearly fed daily by the hand of God, looking to God every single day for their daily provisions, give us this day our daily bread, would have been a prayerful plea for them in their wilderness sojourn. Even though they knew all of that from their wilderness traveling, this would be different. They would now be entering into the promised land, that which they had been searching for and journeying toward all those years. A land with flowing streams, springs and underground waters, welling up in valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and honey. A land where they would eat bread without scarcity, where they would lack nothing. And this new land, this new abundance their new affluence and success would hold for them a danger of a new wilderness, a less obvious wilderness, but in some respects a more dangerous and seductive wilderness. And you know the name of that wilderness. It has a name. It's called pride. How tempting it will be for them to forget what the Lord has done, how easy it will be for them to, to look at themselves with great satisfaction in the mirror and take way too much credit for their good fortune. How seductive it will be for them to elevate themselves, to, to wear the mantle of pride that breeds other kinds of deadly ills, those kissing cousins of pride, arrogance, selfishness. Self-centeredness, self-righteousness, self-exaltation, rejoicing in their own strength, drunk on their own power and self-sufficiency, becoming a God unto themselves, no longer in need of the Lord their God. Moses knew the deadly potential of the human ego run amok. And so he offered a stark warning to the soon-to-be inhabitants of the promised land before they began to bask in the abundant goodness that would come to them from the very hand of God. And his word to them is surely a word to us as well. How tempting, how easy, how seductive our successes can be. And if we don't understand that about ourselves... <laughs> if we don't realize that we are every bit as susceptible as our faith ancestors, if we do not guard against such folly in our lives, we are pliable clay in the hands of the deceiver, that ancient serpent who invites us to take a bite of the fruit from the tree at the center of the garden in order that we too might become like God. It is the week of thanksgiving. And in these days, we seek to be a bit more mindful of our blessings. And we'll seek, hopefully these days, a little more intentionally to cultivate gratitude in our lives. We'll be a bit more intentional about considering the things for which we all have every reason to be thankful. And even as we count our blessings in our own lives, let's do try to remember that God is worthy of our thanksgiving and praise, no matter what our present circumstances may be. And as we enter into these days, may we consider the wisdom and the warning of Moses that was spoken to the children of Israel before entering into the land of promise. May we hear again 
this ancient teaching with our contemporary ears and let us approach these days with a renewed commitment not to forget the Lord our God who brought our faith ancestors out of Egypt and guided them through the wilderness, who raised up prophets and teachers, who was incarnate in Jesus, who went about healing and doing good and offering welcome and embodying love to all whose life, death, and resurrection is the source of our hope and our salvation. Let us not forget the Lord our God who is always worthy of our thanksgiving, gratitude, and praise. And in not forgetting, let us remember. Let us daily remember our utter and complete dependency upon God's grace. Let us reject and refuse the mantle of pride that always goes before a fall. And let us be vehicles of hope and goodness. Let us be people of gratitude and thanksgiving. Let us approach our God, our neighbor, and ourselves in true humility of spirit, striving each day not to forget what the Lord has done and remembering with thankful hearts to bless the Lord our God from whom all Blessings flow. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as our wonderful band leads us in Give Thanks. Thanks. Amen. Thank you all. The, uh, well, I have once again had a thoroughly enjoyable time here. Um, I love this 909 service, and I love to take this inspiration we get this morning and use it as the springboard for the week that comes. So I encourage you all to do that. Um, this week, a lot of people are going to be going over the river and through the woods. Um, today, maybe they're all going to be using planes, trains, and automobiles. 
but a lot of people are going to be setting sail to be together with family and friends and loved ones to celebrate Thanksgiving. And I know, I know many of my thoughts and comments on Thanksgiving and really on many of these special days, they're very consistent. They're even repetitive. And that's because what they represent does not change. How can you overstate the importance of faith, hope, and love, and also giving thanks? As we finish up today, let me remind us all to exhibit these same consistent and repetitive habits of thankfulness. So let's fly on out of here with kindness as our go-to and gratitude as its wingman. Charles, wind it up and let her fly. Not a 